Well, good, good morning, everyone. My name is Rick Sterling, and I'm the president of Western IM. And I'd really like to thank you all for attending the webinar today about the Microsoft SharePoint and cloud capabilities of our Whisper tool. Since this is a series of webinars on the Whisper tool, I'd uh, just like to do a really quick recap, if that's OK with all of you. So we've done uh, first one on uh, physical information capabilities of Whisper and how it would enable a quick inventory of all your physical holdings, including the validation of what you already think is in the boxes now. Those of you who attended the last webinar about Whisper and its shared drive cleanup capabilities got a pretty good indoctrination into the, ele the electronic side of, of the Whisper tool. And some of those features you'll see again today while we focus on SharePoint and, and cloud locations. Just a quick note for the technical people, any of them on the webinar today, is it's a pretty modern architecture. Uh, product is designed and built in .NET and uses RESTful services calls. So very modern in terms of its, uh, its uh, makeup. Uh, it has an API. It's uh, fast and easy to use, uh, passive and, uh, and does not negatively impact your users or IT. And you'll hear me say this several times today, a very important feature in, in the tool. Generally implemented as a software as a service kind of solution, but can function on premise if, if required. So we're talking about Microsoft SharePoint and cloud-based content today, but there are follow-on webinars that will speak to the other capabilities in Whisper and how they could help with many different types of projects in your organizations. So make sure you sign up for the ones that you're most interested in. Uh, there's two left, such as uh, how Whisper could help in the areas of classification and reorganization. That'll be really interesting for all the records management uh, folks in, on the uh, webinars. And then a uh, final one uh, really focuses on migration of information. So you can get more value from other applications that you currently have now um, or, or in future, like SharePoint, Perceptive, Documentum, and others. And I kind of find these days that uh, corporate head office uh, often changes gears and, and mind on which application they might want to use over time. So with Whisper, at least you don't have to deal with that really. We don't really care what the back end might look like for a migration when we get to that one. Uh, it's whatever uh, place uh, the information needs to go. So it's, it's kind of important. Uh, we use the webinars to highlight how Whisper would assist in actual projects as much as possible. The, uh, the classification and reorganization one uh, is more, the metadata is already in Whisper and we'll get to see how we can manipulate that inside. So, um, just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, SharePoint, uh, first of all. And what I find in many organizations across North America is it's everywhere. So SharePoint's been around for about two decades now. Uh, it has 190 million users spread over 200,000 customers. That's a direct Microsoft quote in Wikipedia, my favorite source of truth. <laughs> it is without a doubt the best collaboration platform ever built though. Uh, I bet if you could ask uh, every one of you in person today, uh, if you had Microsoft SharePoint somewhere in your organizations, virtually all of you would say, yes, it's somewhere. And typical uh, to what I find everywhere I go. So the next question is, do you know what's in all the SharePoint sites that exist as dead sites? I call them dead sites. Untouched for some length of time after a project was completed or some other purpose they were used for uh, was, was actually finished. And the answer to that, probably no. And of course you're not alone. You would, you would be further surprised in most cases to find out that IT usually doesn't know what's there either. So what do we do about that? Well, mapping those sites and finding out what is actually there would be a great start. And Whisper is a really perfect tool for that. So I want to do a quick introduction to Troy and, and many of you that have been on the other webinars uh, have been introduced to Troy and, and know him. Uh, already, but Troy's uh, one of the partners at Western IM and uh, also our lead developer. 
So believe me, I'm sorry to say that after many decades in IT, uh, for me, he is really the technical one on this webinar today. <laughs> So uh, we have to inventory the electronic information that we have now uh, and add classification to it in some understandable way, including the SharePoint sites and any cloud locations. So, uh, so we can do disposition in the end through a, some kind of documented process. Sounds like records management to me. <laughs> a solid process should allow us to push for sign off at the end of an inventory mapping project to allow disposition of a whole lot of SharePoint and cloud information. End result would undoubtedly reduce operating costs uh, for the organization while freeing up a whole lot of space. So what about the information that lives in those dead SharePoint sites and cloud locations, you ask? Well, good thinking. Uh, SharePoint sites and cloud locations are somewhat similar to uh, in nature. So they, they both have a URL location, so we can talk about SharePoint sites and other cloud locations with similar goals in mind. Once we sync up the metadata into Whisper, we're certainly going to ask some SMEs, uh, subject matter experts that is, why the sites were created, uh, what information they contain, and then uh, probably determine what to do with the important information that, that probably exists out there in those sites. Goal here is to build up a process that's repeatable and documented. By the way, this also applies to the other locations like Microsoft OneDrive, Google, and others used in day-by-day -day business. Just a quick story, uh, several years ago now, did a presentation, a cloud presentation actually, with uh, an attorney in the, in the US. And uh, he is number two to the general counsel of this particular company uh, that they work for. Um, the legal department in that, that company is 240 attorneys, that gives you an idea of size. And we had a very long discussion about cloud and what was going on in the cloud. And he, he happened to be talking to the sales group in that organization and found out that they had on their own volition gone out and, and set up Google and had started putting a whole lot of corporate information into Google without telling anyone. So not legal, not records and information management. Nobody knew that the sales department was putting things into Google. So it was quite a project for them to get the stuff back out of there again in the end and, and protect it. So just a quick story. So what, first of all, though, what's our goal in the project? So we could say there's a number of different possibilities here. Uh, maybe we want to safely get rid of legacy SharePoint sites at, at some correct moment that we determine. Or uh, we want to protect the corporate records that might live in those legacy SharePoint sites. Or corporations thinking of using SharePoint as our corporate solution, and we want to define a proper process to use in the beginning. So collection of records and disposition, decommissioning of the sites at the proper time is handled the right way. Uh, we have other cloud locations maybe that also fit the bill, which is we don't know what's there and we need to be able to get rid of it based on appropriate corporate rules. And uh, I bet uh, several of you on the webinar today are already formulating some kind of other combination or permutation that Whisper might assist with in that regard. So let's try to outline some of the consistent pieces of a Whisper SharePoint cloud inventory project, and then look at the features in Whisper that would uh, not only help with that assignment, but actually make it possible in the end. Uh, so the first step of any project is to write a, a project charter and get it approved through the management uh, group. And you may already have one of those project charters in place at this point, you know, if you did some other Whisper projects in the first place. Uh, once that's done, deciding on a communications plan, uh, to, so the business units are involved uh, would be really important to make sure you have a classification system and a retention schedule in hand, whether it's completely current or not. I find that, that often those retention schedules and, and classification systems often have them in touch for quite a few years, but um, at least you have one. Uh, you probably want to plan out what extra things your team or teams are going to look for uh, during the project since there's no reason to leave any loose change on the counter. We're going to be looking at SharePoint sites and cloud locations with uh, subject matter experts in tow anyway. So we should have a plan in mind for new things we might like to know, like, you know, pockets of personally identifiable information, PII, 
uh, things that should be on legal hold, uh, sites that contain no corporate records. So that's just like a SharePoint site that contains no corporate records and has been there for quite a long time. How do we actually flag that and then uh, get that information to someone else to uh, dispose or decommission the site? Maybe we just want to develop a consistent process, which I think we all do uh, for this, so we can go forward in a rational way. One thing we should all know already is that there will be no less SharePoint sites or cloud locations in the future. It's never going to get smaller than it is right now. So we should get this figured out right away uh, so that it doesn't snowball on us down the road. We should also be familiar with the organization's goals and we should tie in the project with those goals. So that's pretty critical. One of the very important things about a project such as this though is acquiring appropriate software tools. Uh, sorry, that's a sales note for Whisper. Uh, in case the project like this special kind of inventory, uh, I, it's really, really important to have, a, have the proper tools. And planning, planning, planning are always kind of the keywords of any, any project. So remember, um, remember that Whisper is a passive tool. So I just want to add this again. We only bring in metadata and folder structure, but not actual documents. This assists all of you in information management in a whole bunch of different ways. It alleviates some of the security considerations that might come into play if we actually ingested the documents themselves. It also allows us to accomplish our project goals without troubling IT or the users. We're not actually moving information around in your infrastructure, but we're passively moving it inside Whisper. So as we complete our, pro complete our project, we're not bugging everybody else around us. You can actually do the job with your team in your own time frame without being impacted by the normal time constraints that always affect us in these situations. Without Whisper, the timing for a project like this would likely never be right. So as in the last webinar uh, on shared drive cleanup, if you are on that one, we start with ingestion of metadata, just to give you a heads up here, but this is, is the, in this case, we actually point Whisper at a SharePoint site or other cloud location and use the sync button in Whisper to bring that metadata in. Now you probably need a little support from IT, probably uh, in that case, if you don't have access to the SharePoint sites or other cloud locations but it usually isn't a big deal to get that particular thing done. That's in order to get the sync of information in. And before I hand off to Troy, uh, don't forget that you, you can ask questions in the Zoom application along the way. We'll try to get to the answers to those questions uh, during the webinar. If we can't for some reason, we'll reach out to you uh, separately and, and answer the questions if we don't get to that. I'm just going to, Troy, I'll, I'll let Troy take over now and, and uh, and show you uh, Whisper as it relates to SharePoint and cloud locations. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, I think that was a very good kind of overview of kind of what we're seeing when it comes to cloud and, and SharePoint. So just a kind of couple of housekeeping things up front here. Uh, what we're looking at right now, if you can see my screen, it'll, this is the actual Whisper application. Due to kind of what we're gonna be looking at today, we'll be hopping around just a little bit to demonstrate kind of where these sources are coming from. We'll be looking uh, at SharePoint sites and, and synced local locations. Uh, so I'll try to keep this as smooth as possible, but just note uh, this is kind of going to be the main interface that we'll be dealing with within Whisper, but we'll also be tabbing around here to see a couple of actual sources. So the first thing I'd like to talk about when it comes to the cloud is that cloud usually it, it, there's hundreds of them out there. There's all kinds of different APIs. There's different ways to interact with them. And I just wanted to start with one thing that's going to be familiar for those who were actually here last week when we talked about shared drives. The first kind of tool that I'd like to utilize when taking in some of this or trying to manage some cloud content is to use uh, the tools that are already existing with those applications. The first two I'll look at here are it's actually going to be a Google Drive and uh, a OneDrive location. So. On, on our Google Drive, well, we'll start with Google Drive here. This is kind of, if for those who are familiar with Google Drive, this is kind of what we usually see in the, the web interface. But we also, in this first example, we're gonna take a look at how we can utilize the Google backup and sync functionality, where we get a local view of our content within our actual Windows folder structure. 
And this will resonate with the shared drive work that we did last week. So here's what we're seeing. This particular one that I've set up has got a bunch of uh, data in it, some sample data I called for uh, an ACWAC meeting. This is basically some land data, mainly around some boards and meetings that happen. So when I look at this data that's coming from this particular shared drive, when we get to electronic profiles and what data is here, this is going to be some land data in meetings. So here, this I've just moved into my uh, Windows Explorer. Uh, and here's just the Google Backup and Drive sync on my computer. And this just gives you the extra node, very similar to what we see with share, uh, OneDrive, for example. And what I'm going to do is utilize the tools of uh, OneDrive and Google to use their, their tool for Google Backup and Sync to latch onto this data that I've actually got synced with my drive. Now, this is kind of an indirect way. Uh, this is just to kind of demonstrate how we can utilize the tools that already exist with some cloud ones. The, when we get to SharePoint, we'll see some more direct integrations where we actually go directly to APIs rather than some of the other tools that might be available like this one. So let's hop back to Whisper. I, I mentioned here we got a Google Drive. I've actually created a node here. Uh, what we're looking at, for those who are not familiar, the left-hand side are what we're calling our electronic profiles. And they're essentially a set of nodes that point to some different sources that we were looking at. A couple of these were actually from last week for the, one, uh, for the share drive, but I've added a couple of new ones here called Google Drive, OneDrive, and our two SharePoint ones down here we'll be looking at today. And this is a direct view into those sources. So as I'm expanding here on the left-hand side, I'm seeing what my local Google Backup and Sync is seeing. And here's all those folders that I saw earlier on my Google OneDrive. On the right hand side here in the middle, this is kind of, this is our, our reorganization area where within our Whisper, we're specifying some functional organization here, things like uh, in this particular setup, we've got department function activity. Many organizations will do this differently. We'll talk more about the reorganization and classification next week, but just to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at here on this, the other side is kind of a breakdown of function, uh, department functions and activities. So as I selected something here from my, my Google Drive, uh, we can see that this was actually under our lands, boards, and committee meetings, and under various. And this was all brought in as part of what we saw last week with the electronic profiles, which we'll take a look at here. The electronic profiles is just a set of default data for our sources, whether it's our shared drive, our, our cloud sources, our SharePoint sites. And I've specified a couple of default pieces of information when I scan or sync these in. Department here, I said it was land and resources, our boards and committees, because just like that attorney that Rick was talking about earlier, somebody's gone out and created a shared drive for sales. This one was created for lands and department. They went out and created their own source. So we can put a couple of functional organization metadata to this. And as well as I've also specified a classification of land 04. So this is very similar to what we saw last week. We won't go into the data rules engine this week. Uh, data rules engine just briefly is a way that we can do some uh, rules that can apply to our, our electronic profiles that can help us find things like give me the contracts in, or help me find uh, PII information or if you find this particular type of document classified it this way. We're just going to stick at the high level here for this week and focus on the cloud. So that's our land here. It's all been synced in. Again, just as Rick said, we have not moved these documents. They still, if I, I'm, I, I'm a user on the other end and I have somebody pointing at my Google Drive or the corporate Google Drive, I have not moved these documents. And as a records person, maybe doing the records classification on this, they can continue using that uh, as it is today. Let's take a quick look at OneDrive. Uh, I had mentioned this earlier here. I got a OneDrive. I'm just gonna look at my personal one. I think I pointed this at uh, my documents uh, right here. So we've got a couple, it looks like some HR documents here. So our, our OneDrive is kind of gonna be built out the same way where I've got you know Brian here. Brian's our general manager here. He's got an employee number. And you can see here we've scanned and, and synced into these documents in, into uh, human resources, staff documents, various. Just want to highlight something a little bit different than what we saw in the Google Drive is that we can actually specify different types of uh, objects or containers or content. 
We talked about the contract idea here. This is something we didn't see last week, but this, this week when I scanned these in, I actually said, help me find personnel records rather than folders. So it identified Brian Hines here as a personnel, uh, personnel content type rather than a folder document type. This allows us to put extra pieces of information on like first name, last name, date of birth. And this is different than our electronic folder where we had like a folder path and description on it. And here we can see we've got a couple of certificates. Uh, we classified these as IMT02. Uh, to and from dates were, were captured from the create dates on those uh, documents. We've got a couple of certificates, uh, name change requests, leave forms, and things like that. Let's go a little bit further here is that now we have these electronic folders. We specified Brian as being our kind of container here, but we've got a couple of pieces of documents that are, we can specify some more specific information. And I've done this manually for Rick. So when we brought Rick in, it was all unknown. And I did this manually where I opened up his certificate here and I've actually changed the content type to specifically say uh, certificate. And here's where we can start adding more information that we might not have had just from electronic uh, file type, but from a document type. Tie this back to the actual OneDrive. On that OneDrive, it was kind of the wild, wild west where we just had files. Yeah, there was some naming conventions that the users were using here that I could have leveraged to uh, specify document types and personnel types. But now we're adding more information to what that collaborative area is using. And, and as a records or an information professional, we're, we're getting more value from this particular piece of content. Okay, just want to highlight that we didn't get too deep last week in the electronic side, so I wanted to demonstrate that. Well, let's get on to SharePoint because I know a lot of people are interested in the SharePoint side of it. Again, just to uh, mention, if you do have questions, make sure uh, to, to post them in the Zoom. I believe there's a Q&A part there that we can uh, go back to later on as well. So let's take a look at SharePoint. So in this particular example, I've got two SharePoint sites up, set up here that uh, are our sources. One is on-prem. This is our vCenter server here internally, and I have a westernim sharepoint.com site set up as well. A lot of people are going to be dealing with some cloud, some on-prem uh, SharePoint combination. I did have something very similar in, in, in Whisper here is that we've created electronic profiles for each of these. I'll take a quick look at what the electronic profile looks like. Main difference here is that we're specifying a different profile type that we're looking at SharePoint. And the location is instead of a network drive, we're pointing it at the actual API for the, the SharePoint site. And from here, we can uh, sync in the information. So let's take a look under my SharePoint site online. And here I've got uh, whole bunch of different types of documents. On the left-hand side, now we can start seeing that we've got our SharePoint sites, our cloud sites, our Google Drives, our SharePoint sites. And one thing I've gotten a lot of feedback on, actually just this simple fact that we can have two SharePoint sites side by side in a tree structure next to each other has been very valuable just to people without using the rest of the functionality of Whisper. So we got a couple of documents here. We can see that it was brought in this particular Profile brought in some admin documents that came off this SharePoint online site. Admin department's been using it, but they got all kinds of content all over the place. So we didn't know much about it. So we actually just brought it in as an unknown here. Captured, create dates and, and, and such here. And this just to show you here, we've gone under our admin node. Our local site here, this one, I believe we specified a couple of different. This we said there was economic development uh, human resources documents that lived in our local one, our economic development department, you know, their internal HR content was being stored on a local SharePoint site. And uh, we brought that information in as default. So let's take a quick look here, just back at the SharePoint site and just kind of do a side by side here. So I I've believe I've pointed this one we're looking at here as the Western Ave SharePoint site documents and I believe I did it under test folder one. So I just want to highlight here that we didn't necessarily have to point at the entire SharePoint site. This is a sub location within a particular SharePoint site. So we can get a little bit more granular on where we're looking at and what we want to deal with. 
some SharePoint sites might have lots of different types of data. We saw this last week when we dealt with a uh, shared drive is that certain sections of our shared drive had different pieces of information. So we created a profile to look at a subset of the information on our SharePoint site. Now, I don't want to, uh, just a couple of brief things to highlight what we'll be looking at in future webinars with the classification and migration. We've already seen some of that kind of reorganization happening where we've specified certain profiles kind of fall under a new area or a new functional organization or a records classification, for example. And this is kind of where we're getting some of the reorganization, but we can build on this further. We can actually start moving things around, moving things around inside of Whisper. Again, we haven't ingested the data, but say, for example, I found this uh, test folder three. We've already specified this as economic development because of our profile. We can do things just to highlight next week. We can start moving this and reclassifying it or re, uh, putting it under a new functional organization by just changing the metadata. Say, for example, this particular one is actually admin human resources various, for example. And we can do updates here where then that updates are within Whisper, our passive classification and organization of our, uh, did I put it in human resources various? So we can see that the folder from our SharePoint site has been moved in Whisper, still lives where it is on the SharePoint site. If I go back to my SharePoint site, it still hasn't moved from here. I think it's under test folder three, hasn't moved from our SharePoint site. Again, so tomorrow when, or this afternoon when the employees uh, that are using the site come in here to actually access this content, it still lives here. It, it, just within Whisper, we've given it some more information. Building from that to our second from now webinar, our last one of this series with the migration is that now our middle pane here becomes what we'd like to see coming out the other end. Uh, if we're going to a, an EDRMS system or maybe back into a SharePoint site, a, a clean repository SharePoint site, uh, we, this is the structure we'd see be moved into there. We can do other things from this as well. Uh, looking back to a couple of past ones, we can do some reporting on this. So if I said, I want to see all of my HR uh, content here, I, I'll go to my content. And because we've moved a couple of our uh, cloud sources to our admin department within Whisper, I can kind of sort down to say, okay, show me all my admin department information that was certificates, for example. Actually, we had, let's look at where we had Brian. So Brian, I believe we moved under HR. So we actually had, uh, this was under Rick's as well. If we just open this up here, we can see Rick's certificate was brought in here uh, under the HR department. And from here, we can create some, some reporting. Reporting is uh, just generated uh, by ex exporting data to Excel spreadsheets, whether they're templates or raw data. Next week, we'll also look at classification. We can also look at now that we've applied classification to some of these SharePoint sites, we've given SharePoint sites, uh, Lando one, for example, we might be have retention periods associated with that. We can find that data here with our projected dates uh, filtering as well. We'll look at that in depth next week. Uh, Troy, do you want to uh, do you want to handle a few questions along the way here? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so we have we have one one question is. Uh, so looking at the left side window, uh, electronic profile, and the right side window, reorg and classify, the actual documents still, still live in their uh, regular locations, right? We, we don't shift those around. Yeah, exactly. It isn't until we do a migration that we might move, um, copy or move the document somewhere, but as we're doing this work, it still lives there. So I've actually selected that. I've moved it within Whisper to admin our test three folder here. When I click on it here, we can still see the location of this still lives within test folder on our uh, local SharePoint site. So it, it's still there. Yep. And, and the, another one, Troy, is um, uh, one of the other questions is how many levels of functional uh, uh, naming can we uh, create in Whisper? So by default, we do three. Uh, we've got a couple of other ways that we filter and display data. So if we have more than three levels, we build our structure kind of from that three level. We can use our filtering and reporting to get a little bit more deeper into what we're trying to find 
based on classifications we put in there. Version uh, later on, we'll actually have a little bit more control over this where we can have even more layers. But by default today, we, we use the function uh, de department function activity to kind of start our organization. But just to be clear, we can have unlimited numbers of those three levels, right, Troy? I mean, there's no yeah. limit to how many of those we can have. Yeah, I think we got to. And it's all relationship as well. So I believe most of the functions apply to all the departments. But as I change my functions, I can say if I go admin here, let me see if I can find one that's got some other ones. Most of these just have various. Here, my legal department actually has more activities than the rest of the, the functions that we specified in the system. So I know, Troy, when I first started working with, with Whisper, one of the things that I had I, I didn't really understand at the start was that um, if I, so, you know, I can see this happening in an organization where there's a team of people working with records and information management or IT or some combination of, of the above doing this kind of mapping inventory style project. And of course, not all those people should really have access to documents. So I didn't understand the relationship initially of um, the um, Microsoft and network security uh, as re it relates to people on the team. So if I'm on the team doing the work and I don't have access to that particular location, in other words, we just synced in the metadata into Whisper. Yes, I can see the metadata, but I can't get to the documents. But if I had access, then I would have access to the documents to actually look at them? Yeah, exactly. So to highlight uh, this one node here actually has a red icon. That means I don't have access to that NAS3. I, I made it up to show not having access. When I first loaded this up, um, I was prompted to log into my SharePoint online site because that was an actual login that I have. But our local SharePoint site, uh, I didn't prompt me for login because we're actually using our default network uh, authentication. So Whisper is very much using the security of the person that's uh, on the system. If you don't have access to the network drive, you can't log into that SharePoint site or your Windows user doesn't have access to uh, network authentication uh, SharePoint site, you won't be able to actually get into those sites. So I do have access to these. So you can actually alt click uh, these things and open them up directly from Whisper. But again, if I wasn't logged in here or I didn't have access to it, it would not open the document for me. So that's really good then, Troy, from a number of different uh, ways because, you know, often you're going to have uh, several people on your team and, uh, you know, you don't want all of them to have access necessarily to all the different uh, documents that are in the network drive. And the other thing is IT is going to be a lot easier to work with when you need a little bit of assistance once in a while to get into certain places if, if we're not going to be uh, dealing with anything other than network security. Correct, yeah. That, that's it's really been one of the highlighting features of whisper is that we honor the security of whatever system you're trying to access we don't use any special accounts or service accounts to you know give everybody that has whisper access to the, those uh, sources yeah for sure okay. any other questions right now troy no i think that's yeah i don't see any other so are you comfortable you've gone through uh, the features there, Troy, that we're going to help everybody in their SharePoint and cloud locations uh, specific inventory? Yes. Uh, and just to, again, kind of highlight what we've been doing in the past. We, we've kind of started building this demo area, even from our first webinar. And as we move through these, I think people can start seeing how we're adding more and more sources and more and more content and inventorying more uh, information within our organization, physical and electronic. And as we have now taken our cloud sources and added them to the mix, we will have even more value next week when we get into our classification and reorganizations where we can start applying things like our retention periods to SharePoint sites that may have never had the capability of doing uh, retention on. So uh, Troy, can you do one thing for me? Uh, can you, uh, if I was uh, uh, looking for something because of uh, an information request, in my organization uh, and I was uh, trying to find something and I had Whisper in place with all the metadata in place. How would, so let, let's take one of those certificates that, that uh, you put in for, for a SharePoint site. Right. Uh, how would I go find that? Okay. Or, or see if I can find that. 
Yeah, sure. So let's, uh, we had actually employee numbers that were part of one of the electronic profiles. So let's actually uh, track that down. I'm just going to show where it was on our, our Google Drive. We had an employee number, STC00. So let's actually find that content later on and anything that we might have gotten from other sources as well. I believe we're only going to find that content on our drive here. But if I do a search for 0002, this is actually Brian. If I select one of these con uh, pieces of content here, we'll actually be taken to Brian's content. So right here, I can see some of this was actually initially scanned from a different source. So uh, because we brought these in from sources, uh, this one here was from the OneDrive, but we actually had it in the other places as well. So we can see the sources for these particular pieces of content came from different areas. And based on the uh, employee ID here, we, we found more information on Brian other than kind of maybe just that one piece of content that came from the OneDrive. So the more information we get in, obviously, as an inventory group or an inventory team uh, for the organization, the easier it's going to be to find things when we need to, like uh, things from an information request. Or, or some other uh, reason that the corp corporate's looking for it. Yep, yeah, exactly. And I just did a search for me here and I can see I've got a whole bunch of stuff. PC Troy was the NAS example we did last week. I don't think we had anything from our cloud sources this week that were, was for me, but yep. And uh, we can kind of, and we actually have some physical stuff here alongside our electronic content, whether it was- so that's really good too. We get to see if we've done physical inventory or phys we've got our physical metadata in there too. We can see everything side by side, electronic and physical that we might have on a certain particular topic or, or, or naming conventioning. Yeah, it's really powerful to say, hey, we know we got content from Troy in our shared drive in our cloud, but we've also got other this other pieces of information. We've worked with other subject matter experts that have helped us classify and uh, sync in some data. And we're not just, no, our cloud stuff becomes even more valuable because we're not just getting what we're seeing on that one SharePoint site, but all, multiple SharePoint sites and other sources of data within the organization. Great. Thanks, Troy. Well, I, not to keep everybody, uh, we've kind of gone through the, the whisper information for sh the shared drive. Uh, sorry, we've gone through shared drive. We've gone through physical. We've now gone through the kind of uh, SharePoint and cloud locations. And next week, uh, classification and reorganization uh, component, which I think will be really interesting uh, for the, particularly for the records management folks next week as we go through some of those things, Troy. Uh, just, uh, just to finish up, uh, you know, none of us have ever had unlimited budgets for any kind of project uh, that we wanted to do. Whisper was really designed to be that tool that gives us the scope to do many of the projects that we've always wanted to do <laughs> at a manageable price, but never had the money to, to get done. So, and, and I don't want to have to wait for another budget year a lot of times to get some work done. I find this a lot with uh, records and information management projects, particularly is people are uh, wanting to do work but, but they're hampered by the, by the budgetary uh, side of things to, to actually get the money to do the projects. So Whisper's a really inexpensive way to get uh, these kind of jobs done, multiple projects done. So thanks for attending the Whisper SharePoint Cloud webinar today. And I really hope you've seen uh, what a great job Whisper would do in assisting you in inventorying that kind of SharePoint sites and other cloud locations in the organization. And suffice to say that Whisper is probably one of the most versatile inventory tools for both physical and electronic information that, that probably ever existed. I know it's one that I wish I'd had 10 years ago. We hope that you'll attend the follow-on webinars to come uh, outlining more of the electronic capabilities of the Whisper tool. And in future webinars, we'll speak to the capabilities of classification and reorganization. And the last one really is going to be a a very uh, interesting one on migration. So, uh, and in fact, that last one on migration, you might want to book your, some of your IT folks into that one too. It might be interesting for some of the IT groups as well. So thank you all again, and look forward to uh, having you on the next webinar for classification reorganization. Thanks, Troy. Thanks everyone. Have a good afternoon.